In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the user interface and tools of Perfect Effects 4. Perfect Effects 4 is broken down into three distinct areas. On the left, you've got your Effects, Favorites, and Presets tabs, as well as the search bar, allowing you to search for any particular effect, and then a breakdown of all of the categories of effects that we've built. In the center of the UI is the preview area. This is where your image will appear and where all of the effects that you apply will render. To the top left of that, you'll notice our tool well. From the top, you have your masking brush, your masking bug, your hand tool, and your zoom tool. The right column of the user interface is where you'll have more advanced controls. From the top, you'll have your navigator, which will allow you to zoom in at specific increments. You'll also have a loop view, which makes it easy for you to find out where you are when you're zoomed in tight on your image, and then a histogram, which will show you the distribution of tone in your image, from shadows on the left, through mid-tones in the center, all the way to highlights on the right. Below that is the effect stack. The effect stack will show you the order in which you're applying effects. You can choose to delete an effect or expand a preset. You also have the ability to apply blending mode options. We'll take a look at that in a second. Below that are the effect options. The effect options are effectively the building blocks of perfect effects. From here, you can choose whether you want to create a black and white effect, a blur, a border, a color enhancer, a duo tone, a glow, a photo filter, sharpening, texturizer, tone enhancer, or a vignette. By creating several effect options layers, you can effectively create your own preset. Now let's take a look at the effects browser on the left. As previously mentioned, at the top there are three primary tabs. The effects tab, the favorites tab, and my presets. Let's start with the effects tab. At the top you'll see a search box. To search, just click in and start typing something. If I want to find the effect called green enhancer, I'll start typing green and you'll see them here. You'll notice that by default we display our effects in a two column view. You can choose how you want to display the effects and have the options of doing a single column, dual column, triple column, or list. To change, just click on the respective icons on the bottom left of the effects bar. Here's single column, double, triple, and list. You'll also notice that next to each effect, or if you're in a thumbnail view, on the bottom right of the effect thumbnail is a flag. This indicates whether you want to specify an effect as a favorite or not. So let's say I do like to use Green Enhancer a lot. I can set it as a favorite by clicking on the flag, which will turn white. Now, if I go to the Favorites tab, I have my effect right here. If I want to remove a favorite, all I need to do is click on that flag and it'll be removed. Favorites are a great way for you to quickly access effects that you use often. If you've saved presets already, you can set those as favorites as well, and they'll appear right here too. One more thing about the effects bar. Let's say you have effects in the movie look category, and you want those effects to be larger. You can enlarge the width of this column by dragging from the end out. This will enlarge the thumbnail preview, as well as reduce the size of the preview area accordingly. It makes it easier for you to see what the effect will look like on your image. Now let's talk about applying effects. There are two primary ways that you can apply an effect. First, you can preview the effect on your image by single clicking on that effect. This will render the effect onto your image, giving you a preview. Now, this is a temporary preview. If I click on another effect, it will overwrite the layer with the new effect. If I want to commit this effect and move on with another effect, I have to click on the Add button, which is located in the effect stack under the layers. Alternatively, there's a second way that I can apply an effect. If I know that I want to take an effect at face value and just create a new layer on top of it, instead of single clicking, I can double click on the effect. Double clicking will apply the effect and then create a new empty layer automatically, allowing me to move on. One thing to note is when you click add, which commits that effect, or if you double click on an effect, which will automatically apply it, all of the previews in the effect library will automatically update and re-render, showing you the most up-to-date version. This is great because you're constantly getting an idea of what each effect will look like as you're building your image. Now, let's say you want to go back and adjust the first effect layer. You see that in the effect stack, there's an empty layer, which I don't want. If I want to remove any layer, all I need to do is click on the delete button, and that'll delete that layer. 
Now let's talk about some of the controls that you have while an effect is applied. First, you have the amount slider. The amount slider controls the opacity or strength of that effect. As I grab the amount slider and drag to the left, you'll notice that the strength of the effect is gradually disappearing until it's totally gone when the amount is at zero. My advice is to take every effect, bring it to zero, and then slowly bring it up, stopping where you're happy. In addition to just controlling the strength of the effect, you can also control how it blends with the layer below it. To control the blending, click on the Options button, and you'll be presented with the Blending Options pop-up window. From here, the first dropdown that you'll want to pay attention to is the Blending Mode dropdown. These are all of the Blending Mode options that you have available, and all you need to do is hover over to get a preview of what the Blending Modes will look like. I usually find that Overlay, Soft Light, Hard Light, and Multiply are the ones I use the most. Below that is the Amount Slider, and the Amount Slider correlates to the Amount Slider that you see over here in the Effect Stack. You can also control where the Blending Modes apply to. By default, it's going to apply to the entire image, but you can specify to apply to highlights, midtones, shadows, and specific color channels. If you have a person in your shot, you can also apply the Blending Mode only to flesh colors. The Fuzziness slider controls how the Blending Mode blends with the image. Bringing the fuzziness to the left will give you a very sharp blend, and bringing it to the right will give you a more subtle blend. Under the Protect section, you have three sliders. You can choose to prevent blending from appearing in the highlights, the shadows, or if you have a person or people in your shot, you can prevent from flesh colors. If you want to start over with the blending options, just click on the Reset button. To cancel, you'll cancel out, and then if you want to commit the changes, just click Apply. Now, let's say I don't want the effect to apply onto the cooling tower over here. If I want to remove the effect, I'll just click on the masking brush from the tool well on the top left, and then I'll start masking out. Now, to prevent the mask from breaking over the edge of the cooling tower, I want to use the Perfect Brush. This is an all new tool found in Perfect Photo Suite 7, and you'll see the checkbox in the Tool Options bar at the top. Turning on the Perfect Brush will give me edge detecting masking. Now, to show how this is going to work, I'm going to turn on my mask. And to do that, all I need to do is go to the black bar on the bottom left of the preview area, and here you'll see we have several options. We have Mask Red, Mask White, Mask Dark, Mask Grayscale. For me, Mask Red usually works. Now, I can control the characteristics of the brush. At the top, we have several options. First is the mode. I can choose to paint in or paint out. I can also select the size of the brush. I can type in the value, or I can use the Disclosure Triangle slider over here. The W stands for Wacom Support. If you have a pressure-sensitive Wacom tablet, by clicking on the W in the Size section, the pressure sensitivity will control the size of the brush. The same thing goes for the opacity. The opacity is the strength of the brush. At 100%, the mask will fully punch through. If I want to reduce the strength of the brush, all I need to do is drop that opacity value down. And like the size, if I activate the Wacom Pressure Sensitivity Support, the harder I press, the stronger the brush will be. The feather controls the rate at which the masking brush falls off. A feather of zero will give you a hard edge, whereas a feather of 50 to 100 will give you a very soft edge. In this case here, I'm going to decrease the feather and I'm going to drop the brush size a bit. Now with the perfect brush activated, you'll see how I'm able to get to the edge and not worry about painting out the sky. To turn the mask off, all I need to do is go back to the Mask Preview area and select After. Now to move on, I'm going to click on Add, and that will commit the effect and create a new effects layer. Now, let's say I choose another effect like Cyberpunk. By single clicking, I'm going to get a preview of what that effect will look like on the image. Now, let's say for whatever reason, I don't want Cyberpunk to appear in the middle part of the image. The easiest way for me to remove an effect from a large area is to use a masking bug. The masking bug is located in the tool well right below the masking brush icon. I'm going to click on it, and nothing will happen until I click in the image. So now when I click on the image, my masking bug appears, and you can see that using the solid colored handles, I can adjust the orientation of that bug. I can also choose to change the shape. By default, the bug is planar. 
It's indicated as such under the shape section. We refer to it as rectangle. I can also select round as well. By putting the bug where I want it, I can easily mask out large areas of the image. And like the masking brush, I have control over the feather, which is the transition of the masking bug, and the opacity, which is the overall strength of that masking bug. Bringing the opacity down to zero will effectively remove the bug. Now, let's say that I like this combination of effects and I want to be able to apply them down the road. The easiest way for me to do this is to save it as a preset. A preset will save the effects in the order that you have them, as well as if you applied any blending modes, and the amount or strength of that effect layer. It'll also keep any masking bug that you apply. What it will not keep is masking brush strokes. So if you look at the Arkham layer, you'll notice that I use a masking brush to paint out the cooling tower. If I save this preset, that masking brush stroke will not be applied. However, if I click add over here to show you, the masking bug that I used on the cyberpunk effect will be saved. So let's save a preset. To do so, go to the preset menu item and then select save preset. From here you can choose a name for your preset, so in this case we'll just call it uh, nuclear tower. And then I'm going to create a category. I'll call this uh, urbex grunge presets. And I'll be the creator. If you want to choose a description you can do so, but in this case I'm just going to click create. And now if I go to the My Presets tab in the Effects bar on the left, you'll see there's the category that I created, and then there's my preset. If I want to use this preset often, I can click on the Favorites flag. Now again to illustrate, notice how the masking bug has been retained in the preset over here. If I go to the Favorites section, I now have my green enhancer that I set from earlier in this video, and the Nuclear Tower preset. To see your before and after images as you move on, you can choose several preview modes. Clicking on the preview mode button on the bottom left will cycle through the modes that you have at your disposal. If you want to toggle the before and the after, just click on the preview checkbox. If you're done with your image and you're happy with the results, click on apply on the bottom right to save out those changes. Or if you just want to cancel out, click on the cancel button. Be sure to watch all of the other videos that we have for Perfect Effects, which will take closer looks at individual tools and style methods. Thank you very much.